Great, so we are now on chapter 2.5, and which is on unit rates for grade 8. Unit rates are really handy because you'll be using them if you ever go to the grocery store or if you want to compare things um, that aren't the same, uh, for example, uh, like quantity. So if you're comparing two boxes of cereal, for example, um, or two boxes of cookies, and let's say this one is 250 grams and it has a cost of $1.99, and then I buy a larger box of cookies or cereal, and uh, this one's 450 grams, and this one costs 349. You can ask yourself, well, which one is cheaper? Well, the dollar ninety-nine is cheaper because it costs less money. But if I ask the question, which is the better buy? Oops. Which is the better buy, or which is better value? That basically means how much is it, uh, how much per gram uh, is it going to be, and which one would be a better buy? Which one would I get more for my money, basically? So there's different types of unit rates that are out there that are standard. Um, but first of all, let's just deconstruct what a fraction or unit rate looks like. On the top is our numerator, and our numerator is normally the dependent variable. And remember, dependent means that it relies on something else. It changes because of something else changing. The thing that we can choose or the thing that we can decide is called the independent variable. So normally, it's the thing that you have a lot more control over when you're buying something. And in most cases, you don't have control over how much something costs. So for example, something, uh, so examples are price would be something that you would find on the top or the cost of something would be found in the numerator because you don't have choice or you don't have control over that cost. What you do have control, however, is how many you buy. So the quantity that you buy, you do have control over. That's in the denominator. Other things you have control over is time. For example, if you're finding out unit rates for... Um, for how long something takes to do something, uh, then you have control over how long you actually work on those things. So here are some examples of some unit rates. So if we look at the price of something, if the price of something is basically charged in dollars per item. And so as you see, the dollars are in the numerator and the item numbers are in the, in the denominator because you have control over how many items you actually buy. Other things that, uh, other examples of unit rate are speed or velocity. And there's different ways of measuring velocity. I can measure it in kilometers per hour. And notice time stays in the denominator because we decide how long we're going to be driving for. We don't necessarily decide on how far something away is. And other examples uh, might be a meter per second. Uh, or a mile per hour, or it could be really any combination of distance over time. So this really is dist over time. Now a third one that we might normally see is salary. So if someone's getting paid for something, we normally get them, get them paid or they are paid at dollars per time. So normally it's per hour, but it could be per day. So for example, if a student makes $40 per day babysitting, or if a worker makes $20 an hour uh, at his or her job. So these are examples of unit rates. So let's do one example right here. Which one is a better buy? Let's say I'm buying some uh, apples. And at, um, at Metro, we see that app, uh, for four kilograms of apples, it costs us $1.85. That's actually a really good price for apples. Um, or for if we go to Loblaws, we notice that seven kilograms of apples costs... Uh, $2.99. And the question is, one of these two is the better buy? Well, what we do is we find the unit rate. We find it per kilogram or per gram, depending on what we prefer our numbers to be uh, like. So for Metro, our unit rate would be, and as we notice, cost goes on the top in the numerator. So this is a dollar eight five four four kilograms. If we use our calculator and you find out the unit rate, it's $0.46 per 
per kilogram, or 46 cents for each kilogram of apple, apples. With Loblaws, for example, so I put the 2.99 in the numerator, over seven kilograms of apples. So then I divide 2.99 by seven, and I end up with 0 0.43, and then dollars over kilograms. Notice the units stay where they are, dollars, kilograms, dollars, kilograms. My answer has the units dollars per kilogram and dollars per kilogram. Now that we can compare the two, we notice that per kilogram, Loblaws is actually cheaper. So then in my, my answers would be Loblaws would be the better buy. Of course, I mean, you could look at it in a real perspective and say, would I even eat seven kilograms of apples anyway? Because it's, it's pretty close in terms of the cost. But if we're just specifically at value, then Loblaws has a better value. There's another way of looking at it and trying to compare it. How many kilograms could I buy with $1? Which basically flips this upside down and saying that the money becomes independent. And so if we focus on only spending $1, how many apples can we buy? We could do that as well and then find out how many, uh, which store gives us more apples per dollar. That you can solve it any way you wish, um, as long as you stay consistent with your units and as long as you follow through with the comparison on both sides, that it's consistent on both sides. So hopefully you understood this lesson. When you have when you have two different units, you get you have to choose which one is independent dependent, which one's in the numerator denominator, and you keep a consistent um, consistent calculation or process for each side. So hope you understood the lesson and we'll do some practice questions in class.